You don't always need a trophy to stand out in the crowd. Class president, football star, class favorite, and undefeated chess champion. Yeah, Chris wasn't any of those things. Nope. But his two friends Diana and Alex were both very talented. Diana was at the top of her math class and took pictures for the class yearbook. And Alex was good at running. Well, at least he thought he was. Yeah, there he goes. And again. We get it. Moving on. It didn't bother Chris that he wasn't in any clubs, because he'd started a club of his own for kids who believed in Jesus. Chris, Diana, and Alex were the only members so far, but that was plenty. He didn't exactly win an award for starting that club, but that was okay. Chris tried not to focus on winning things, and just tried to live his life the way that Jesus would want him to live. Alex still asked Chris from time to time why he hadn't won any awards. Alex had once won a trophy for eating the most hot dogs in five minutes. They make trophies for that? Yes. It was the end of the school year, and there were a lot of competitions going on. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to try to win just one award before the school year was over. At least then Alex couldn't tease him anymore. Two words. Bake sale. Not many people knew that Chris was such a good cook, so winning the bake sale contest would be a breeze. He just had to sell more cupcakes than the other kids. But as the day went on, he found a lot of people with no money who still needed a cupcake. Like Franny, who was crying because she lost her doll, or Remy, who didn't have anyone to play with. Chris enjoyed giving the cupcakes to people. He wasn't worried about the contest. He could win an award some other way. Scavenger Hunt All Chris had to do was find a few things on the list before the other kids did. Dog food, that's easy. But while Chris was in the pet store, Miss Orange asked him to carry a few heavy bags for her. Chris knew that he should help her, so he did. He spent a lot of time helping Miss Orange and lost the scavenger hunt. But that was okay. He could win an award some other way. <laughs> math contest. Chris was good at math, but that was the award that Diana always won. Hmm. He didn't want to try to take that from her, and she would probably win anyway. No, no. He could win an award some other way. School race. Chris was a great runner. He could do this. The race was on. He was in the lead and doing a fine job. It looked like Alex would be getting second place. He was running so hard his face was turning red. Mm. It looked like Alex really, really wanted to win the race. Chris slowed down just a little bit so Alex could win. That was okay. Chris could get an award some other way. But the last day of school came, and Chris hadn't won anything as usual. But as he looked around him, he realized that you don't always need a trophy to stand out in the crowd. We don't always see the life that God saves. Do you know where this is? Of course you don't. This is the creepy culvert that sits right between Alex's house and the animal shelter. It's also where Zombie Cat lives. Yes, somewhere in this culvert lies Zombie Cat. Do you see him? How about now? Did you see him then? Maybe that time? What about then? Of course, Zombie Cat doesn't actually appear and disappear like that. What Zombie Cat does is more like... Yee! Yeah, that's what he does. Alex was scared of Zombie Cat. Alex was also scared of carrots. He hated carrots. Especially carrots that looked like Zombie Cat. But luckily, that only happened in his dreams. Most of the time. So why was Alex walking through the creepy culvert? And why is he wearing a costume? Well, you see, every week, Alex got four dollars for his allowance and he liked to give two of those dollars to the animal shelter on the other side of the culvert. And for a mission like that, Alex had to become more than a kid. He had to become the Humane Kid, otherwise known as Spand Alex. Alex loved animals, except Zombie Cat. And feeding them was very important to him. And there was always one puppy in particular that Alex always cared for, a little white puppy named Cookie. Alex would buy puppy food for him, say hi to the kitties, and be on his way. And even though Alex was scared of Zombie Cat, he would always leave a can of kitty food on the ground for him. 
then run away like a speeding train. Did Zombie Cat ever eat the food? Alex never knew. He was usually too busy running and screaming to notice. So this made his weekly trip to the animal shelter a frightening event. But he did it anyway, because he felt it was something that God wanted him to do. So every week, Alex made the trip through the culvert to the animal shelter and back again. Each week he would run, feed his puppy, say hi to the kitties, leave food for Zombie Cat, then dash home. And he always felt like he was being chased, but he wasn't. Most of the time. Making this journey was Alex's special project. He was feeding animals that needed his help, and that made him happy. So, another week, another trip to the animal shelter. But one day, Alex noticed that his favorite puppy was missing. Miss Orange, who worked at the animal shelter, told him that his puppy had gotten sick and had died during the night. Alex was heartbroken, and he was confused, too. He thought it was his job to save the puppy, and now the puppy was gone. It was a long and lonely walk home. Alex was very upset, but he still left some food for Zombie Cat on his way through the culvert. He put the small dish of cat food on the ground, then ran for his life. But this time, Alex stopped on the way home and cried. Why did his favorite puppy have to die? But we don't always see the life that God saves. You see, Zombie Cat was actually a mommy cat with two baby kitties. Alex hadn't saved one life, He'd saved three. Sometimes, you're only supposed to change one life. Grumpy old man, meh. Grumpy kid, grumpy dog. Grumpy old man again, meh. The town was full of grumpy people. Most towns are. Diana, of course, was just the opposite. She was happy every day for the blessings that God had given her, and she wanted to share that happiness with others. Good morning, she would say, meh. Good morning, she would say, Good morning, she would say. So sometimes, at the end of the day, Diana would feel pretty discouraged. She tried to share God's love with people, but never really felt like it was doing much good. Well, one morning, she said a simple prayer. She prayed that God would help her to make a difference in the life of just one person. And about that time, she had a wonderful idea for a project. Diana was very smart, you see. She was a computer expert, an art expert, a design expert, and a cookie expert. So she decided to use her talents to not just make a difference in the life of one person, but for every person in town. Her idea was to design cards for people, starting with Mr. Buckle, to let them know that Jesus loved them. She spent a whole hour on this card just for Mr. Buckle. Beautiful. She knocked. He answered. She delivered. He opened. He threw away. Maybe she didn't make the card right. Maybe she didn't say the right thing. She was determined to try again. Franny was curious about what Diana was up to. Franny was also an artist and enjoyed drawing animals and balloons and bugs, sometimes dinosaurs, spaceships, fruit, hot dogs. You get the idea. So considering her diverse skills, Diana invited her to help with the rest of the cards. And even though Franny had never worked on something like this before, she seemed very excited to help. Diana and Franny spent all day on the new cards, telling people that Jesus loved them. But, time after time, their cards were pushed aside, thrown away, dropped, and eaten. No wait, that didn't happen. So Diana and Franny tried even harder, even making a card for Gum, the neighborhood bully. God wants you to be nice, it said. That was Franny's idea. Gum liked it. No way he hated it. It seemed like no one wanted the cards they were making, but Diana kept doing the work that she thought God wanted her to do. She finally fell asleep at the table, feeling like she didn't make a difference for everyone like she'd hoped. And she was right. She didn't make a difference for everyone, but she did make a difference in the life of just one person. 
because sometimes you're only supposed to change one life. Sometimes you have to be lying down to see Jesus. Just ask Gum. There he is. Gum never seemed shorter than nine feet high. He was bigger than the rest of the kids, and sometimes he was so big that he seemed bigger than himself. He would always creep around the neighborhood and make life generally difficult for the other kids. He was especially hard on Chris, Diana, and Alex as they tried to tend to club business. Where are you going? He would ask. What are you doing? That's stupid. You're stupid! If Diana was delivering a card, Gum would deliver a surprise. If Alex was being sneaky, Gum would be sneakier. If Chris was visiting his granddad, Gum's foot would visit Chris. You get the idea. Gum wasn't a bad person, but the other kids had been mean to him when he was little. And all of that soaked into him over the years and turned him into, well, Gum. Chris, Diana, and Alex tried to be nice to him. They even tried inviting him to a club meeting. But they never could seem to get through to him. He was like a brick wall, rock solid, 15 feet high. Nothing could break through his barrier of infinite meanness. But they didn't give up on him. Part of being a Christian is being nice to those who are mean to you and loving those who hate you. Chris had to remind the others that they needed to love gum even when he didn't deserve it because Jesus loved them even when they didn't deserve it. So they took it, day after day after day after day. One of the problems was that Gum had never seen Jesus before. Where, he would say. Up there? Over there? Inside here? So the more that Chris, Diana, and Alex would believe, the angrier Gum would get. Chris even called a meeting about it, and they decided to bake him a pan of his favorite brownies. He accepted, then chased them home. So they had another meeting, and decided to invite him to church. That didn't work either. They even had a third meeting and decided to just be friendly to him each day and not be afraid. But they were afraid. And being nice only seemed to make him angrier. Finally, they gave up. They felt defeated. They must have been doing something wrong, they thought. Well, one day they noticed that Gum was missing. It was kind of nice in a way. But at the same time, they knew something was wrong. It turned out that Gum had gotten sick, very sick, and was in the hospital... Chris, Diana, and Alex went to visit him later that day. And there he was. He was sick. He was weak. And he seemed so small now. He opened his eyes. And for the first time in his life, he saw Jesus right there in front of him. Because sometimes you have to be lying down to see Jesus. Sometimes it's what you give that gives you the most. Or maybe it's the lasers. Yes, stand back or face the fury of Metal Gunzerbot with his rapid fists of steel fury. No alien scum can stand in his way. And if that doesn't do the trick, then prepare to face the electric wrath of Shock Zorbatron. And if you're still coming back for more, then the cosmic blunt force of Gold Omni Wheels will teach you a lesson that you won't soon forget. But where is this universal struggle between good and evil taking place? Closer than you may think, right in Alex's bedroom. Alex loved his robots. He'd almost collected the whole set. He battled with them in the morning, played the official video game in the evening, and dreamed about them at night. It was sometimes a bit difficult to get Alex's attention because he always had his head in the clouds. Uh, Alex? Alex? Alex! Was he paying attention? No. Chris, meanwhile, had been planning a special club activity all week. That night there was going to be a big carnival in town, but there were some kids that weren't going to get to go. 
Remy and Franny weren't allowed to go to the carnival because their parents didn't have enough money, and they were too small for most of the rides anyway. So Chris and Diana decided to make their own carnival for them and have it right in their backyard. Chris was going to be in charge of setting up some games for the kids to play, and Diana was going to make prizes for them to win. And Alex was going to be in charge of... Uh, Alex? Alex? Alex! Was he finally paying attention? No. They asked their neighbor Joe to help with the carnival. Joe volunteered to cater the event with hot dogs and hamburgers. Excellent. They even asked their new friend Gum to help by providing some muscle power for the rides. Chris was busy setting up the games, like this fishing game, where Remy and Franny could cast a fishing line over a wall and catch a prize, and Diana was busy making prizes for it. She'd already made a whole set of sparkly, colorful crosses. Some of them even glowed in the dark. And Alex was busy working on... um... Alex? Alex? Maybe later. Chris was frustrated with Alex sometimes. Chris tried to teach him about God and about loving others, but Alex was sometimes too busy playing with his robots. He was always thinking about his toys and about collecting more toys, but Chris still included him in all of their club activities, even when Alex's brain was drifting in outer space. Evening finally came, and it was time for their carnival. Remy and Franny were very excited. Alex arrived on the scene with his wagon of robots to watch the event. He was more interested in playing than helping, but when he saw how much work Chris and Diana had done, he felt bad that he'd been so selfish. While Chris and Diana had been thinking about others, Alex had just been thinking about himself. But it seemed too late to help now. Joe was cooking up hamburgers for the kids, Gum was pulling Franny around in a cardboard box, and Remy was playing the fishing game. Remy's parents didn't have enough money to buy him any toys, so he was really enjoying catching prizes with his fishing line. Pretty soon Remy had already won three sparkly crosses, but he wanted to keep playing anyway. Diana soon realized that all she'd made were sparkly crosses, and she didn't have any new prizes for Remy to catch. They tried to tell Remy that he might have to go play something else for a while, because there weren't any new prizes for him. But suddenly, Remy caught something. They were all amazed when up from behind the wall came a metal Gunzerbot. Remy was shocked. And after that, he caught a Shock Zorbatron. And after that, a Gold Omni Wheels. It was the happiest day of Remy's life. After the carnival was over, Chris and Diana weren't sure what to say. Alex was a little sad that he'd given away his robots, but felt very good that he'd made someone else so happy. The only problem was that Diana didn't know what to do with the rest of her sparkly colorful crosses. That night, Alex slept better than he'd ever slept before. He'd always spent so much time trying to collect so much stuff, but that day he realized that sometimes it's what you give that gives you the most. Sometimes all you have to do is keep praying for your sandwich. Mr. Buckle. He was the meanest and grumpiest old man in town. And to top it off, he had one of the meanest dogs in town, too. Not many people talked to Mr. Buckle, except for Chris. You see, a while back, Chris decided to make it part of his weekly routine to play a game of chess with Mr. Buckle every Friday. Because even though Mr. Buckle seemed grumpy, Chris knew he was probably very lonely, too. So every Friday, Chris would go to Mr. Buckle's house for a game of chess. And every time he went, he would take a sandwich to eat before their game started. Chris always said a prayer before eating his sandwich, even though Mr. Buckle thought it was silly. Mr. Buckle had no room in his life for prayer. He had his grumpy old friends, his grumpy old family, his grumpy old dog, and his grumpy old money. And with all that stuff, who needed to pray? After Chris ate his sandwich, they would play chess. Chris would always lose... Mr. Buckle would laugh at him, and then... And that's the way it would go. By the time the next week rolled around, Chris really didn't want to go back in. But he did. He got out his sandwich and said a prayer. Mr. Buckle made fun of him as usual. They played chess. Chris lost. Mr. Buckle laughed. And... 
The next time Chris considered just not saying a prayer, at least then he wouldn't get laughed at. But no, Chris wanted to say a prayer, even if Mr. Buckle made fun of him. Lost again? The next week Chris really, really didn't want to go back in. But he did. This time Mr. Buckle's grumpy old friends were there. Chris got out his sandwich and said a prayer to tell God thank you. Mr. Buckle's friends thought it was amusing. Chris and Mr. Buckle played their game. Chris lost. Everyone laughed. And... Before Chris knew it, another week had gone by and it was that time again. By now Chris felt very discouraged and didn't feel like he was making a difference at all. Mr. Buckle wasn't going to change. Chris started to just turn around and leave. But he stopped and prayed that God would give him strength. Chris turned and went inside. Mr. Buckle seemed different this time. He'd had a very bad week and was very sad. Mr. Buckle's friends didn't like him when he was sad, so they weren't there. His family wasn't there for him either. They were too busy with other things. And Mr. Buckle's money couldn't make him feel any better either. He had no one, and Chris saw how lonely he really was. Chris took out his sandwich and said a prayer. Mr. Buckle didn't make fun of him this time. In fact, Mr. Buckle closed his eyes too. All of those other weeks, Chris's visit hadn't meant anything to him. But today it meant everything. Chris was there after everyone else had left. And Mr. Buckle was starting to learn that God would always be there too. As for Chris, he was starting to learn that sometimes all you have to do is keep praying for your sandwich.